Tonight marks the cremation of Rama the Ninth, the former king of Thailand. The most important part of the ceremony, though, is not the it's not the chanting or the burning of the flowers. It's the thinking about the goodness he's he showed to the world. He was the most unusual king. He did things that it's hard to find any other king has done to help his country. He could have just stayed in the palace and enjoyed the, the rank and the pleasure and the wealth of the king, being a king. But he didn't. He went out and helped his people, the poorest people in the poorest parts of the country. He had 4,000 royal projects, more than 4,000. More than 3,000 had to do with making sure that everybody had good water. And on top of that, had a chance to gain, gain knowledge, medical care, and setting people up in ways where they could make a living for themselves. In other words, helping other people depend on themselves. All because, as he said, he regarded the entire country of Thailand as his family. He wanted to make sure everybody in the family had the chance to have a good life. And the effect of his goodness didn't stop just with the borders of Thailand. It's because Thailand was stable during all these years, throughout his reign. It opened the opportunity for the forest tradition to flourish and for people from abroad to go and study with the masters of the forest and bring the drama back. So, in fact, we have what Meta here right now owes a lot to the king. And so in gratitude we dedicate this meditation to him. And we think about the, the goodness that he spoke of and the goodness that he exemplified. Because when someone good like this is passed on, it's good to think about how we can make sure that the goodness stays and it doesn't die from the world. There's a passage in the canon where Ananda learned the news that Venerable Sariputta has passed away. He comes to tell the Buddha, and he says that in receiving this news he felt he would lost all sense of north, south, east, and west. In other words, he got dizzy, just overwhelmed by the loss. And the Buddha asked him, when, when Sariputta passed away, did he take virtue with him? No. Did he take concentration? No. Did he take discernment, release? Knowledge and vision of release? No, no, no. Well, these forms of goodness are still in the world. And so it's good to reflect what kind of goodness is here, what kind of goodness did the, the king emphasize in his actions and in his words. There was one set of dramas that was especially striking when they celebrated the 200th anniversary of Bangkok. He gave an address that was televised and sent by radio all over the country. And the heart of the address had to do with four qualities and a list that the Dharma te textbooks in Thailand call the, the qualities of a good householder. They appear in the canon. They don't have that name at all. They're good qualities for anybody, lay or ordained, young or old. The qualities to make sure that we follow our duties in life and we do them well. We do them with sincerity. And actually, we go beyond our duties, too. The four qualities are these truth, self control, generosity, and endurance. Truth is a quality not only just telling the truth, but also being true. You make a promise and you stick with your promise. You make up your mind to yourself you want to do something. Regard that as a promise to yourself. If it's something good, stick with it. If you make up your mind to do something bad, you're not committed to stick with it. In fact, you should ask yourself why you feel committed to that kind of thing. But if it's something good, you want to stick with it and see it all the way through. You remain true to your ideas of what would be really good for your long-term welfare and happiness. And you abide by that. Self-control is your ability to keep your emotions under control. So you don't just speak and say things just because you feel like it. You want to think about what would be the long-term consequences 
of doing this, what would be the long-term consequences of saying this. And you act only in ways that you think that the long-term consequences would be harmless. And if you have the emotions that want to do something else, you have to learn how to bring them under control. Learn how to step outside of them, not identify with them. Think of your mind as being like a large committee. You've got lots of different members in the committee. And just because some member of the committee is in a bad mood doesn't mean the whole committee has to follow along. So if someone in the committee seems especially loud and obnoxious and irritable, try to find other members of the committee that can calm them down, or at the very least that you can side with. Because just because an emotion comes up in the mind doesn't mean you have to follow it. It doesn't mean it's really you. It's just there. Something churned up by your old karma. And you have the choice now with your new karma to either go with it or not. And so if you can think these ways, it helps give you a lot more control over your emotions so they don't run your life. Because what they do when they run your life is they, they're like friends who talk you into doing something against the law, and then when the policemen come, they run away. Those moods are not there to suffer the consequences of, of your unskillful actions. You're the one who's going to suffer. So watch out for your moods. Learn how to bring them under some control. The third quality, generosity. We live in a world where the good that we do, even though it comes from our own efforts, depends on the fact that we learned a lot from other people. We learned language. We learned how to do all kinds of things from other people. We owe a lot to others. So when we gain something from these things, we shouldn't just keep it for ourselves, that these things are there to pass on. This is what makes human society a good society to be in. If everything had a price, we wouldn't be a society at all. It would be just individual units fighting one and over the prices of things. But when you give, it spreads the happiness around. It's a kind of happiness that doesn't have any boundaries. In fact, it erases boundaries. We had some people come in this morning from a different ethnic background. And before they left, they commented on how surprised they were and how generous everyone was here, and how they felt very much at home. And that's exactly it. When you're when generous with other people, it's like they're members of your own home. If there's a price for everything, it puts up a barrier. You become strangers. So generosity is a quality that broadens your own mind, broadens your own heart, and creates a better world for you to live in. And finally, endurance. You have to learn how to endure the harsh words of other people. You have to learn how to endure pain. Because if you can't endure these things, the other qualities are going to be very, very difficult. Because the world is not a perfect place. We try to develop goodness even in a world that's not very good. We can't wait for the rest of the world to be good or true or helpful before we're good and true and helpful. The initiative has to come from us, which means that we have to learn how not to hurt ourselves by the things other people say. They say a few words and they come make contact with the ear, and yet we pull them in and we have a lot more words to say about what they said. What's those extra words in your mind? Those are the ones that make it hard to bear what other people say. As the Buddha said, if you just leave it at the ear, if they say something nasty, you tell yourself an unpleasant sound has made contact with the ear, and leave it at that. Then it's very easy to bear with. Now, the main problem is we don't leave it there. We pull it into our minds. The huge commentary. It's like hitting a gong, and it just reverberates for hours afterwards. So if we can leave it just at the ear, then it's okay. The mind doesn't have to suffer so much. It's a similar principle with physical pain. We get three things mixed up, the physical pain, our body, and our awareness. Actually, there are three separate things. Or we might say they're on three different frequencies. They may seem to be in the same place, but they're like the different radio waves in the air right now. Some stations from Tijuana, some from San Diego, some from Los Angeles, some from Riverside. They're all here, 
in this room. But if you take a radio and tune into different frequencies, you get one station at a time. And it's the same with these things. Pain is a different frequency from the body, and both of them are different frequencies from the mind. It's because we have our perceptions that label these things that tie them together. That's why we suffer. We learn how to drop those labels and just let them be separate. Then the pain is a lot easier to, to bear with. So in both cases, it's the question of what we do in reaction. That's what's making us suffer. So all these are qualities that the king himself exemplified. These are the king's qualities he said. If Thai, all the Thai people followed these qualities, the, the country would be a very progressive country. And it's not just Thai people. It's, these are qualities for people all over the world. If you want progress in your life, you bring these qualities, and whatever duties you have will be, be fulfilled. And then you find that there's an opportunity to even do even more good than just your duties. You've got to look for good things to do for the world. This is part of your generosity. Seeing an opportunity where something needs to be done and no one's doing it, and you're happy to do it. That becomes your qualities of your profession, what the Buddha calls your own noble wealth. Here, the, again, the king was a good example. As king, he. There are lots of projects he did that I've never heard of any other king getting involved with, to help people, to bring progress to his country. And so we make it a principle that we'll do more than we have to. And that way we'll get greater results in our own happiness. Because happiness isn't just physical pleasures or having a good time. It's that deep sense of well-being, realizing that you've given rise to goodness within yourself above and beyond the call of duty. That's where real self-worth comes from, real self-esteem comes from. That's one of the more solid forms that happiness can take. So even though it's a sad day, the king's passed away, and now his body's been cremated, and it's nothing left but ash. But he left behind lessons for happiness, for goodness. And if we're wise, we'll learn from those lessons so we can create greater happiness and goodness in our own lives and for the people around us.